that is the new Home Secretary, Swala Brabman. We expected that, but it's now confirmed. And I apologise, I interrupted you and then uh, had to break away. But I wonder what your thoughts are as we consider these most senior roles within the Cabinet being filled. Well, I mean, to be frank, with these first few appointments, it's so far so predictable because most of these positions had been pretty thoroughly leaked beforehand. I mean, what is going to be interesting with the Cabinet when we get down to the lower Cabinet appointments is the degree to which it looks like uh, the new Prime Minister is trying to bring in all parts of the Conservative Party or whether she continues doing what she's done to date, which is essentially have loyalists around her. So the composition of the Cabinet will matter because, of course, it's a very divided parliamentary party. And when you talk about Liz Trust loyalists, how would you differentiate them from Boris Johnson loyalists? What does this new group of people in charge of the country believe in that perhaps doesn't quite sync with what the previous government was driving towards? Well, I think what we heard today points to a slightly different agenda. I mean, if you, if you think about what the Prime Minister said outside Downing Street today, what was absent was as uh, interesting as what was there. The phrase levelling up wasn't mentioned, the, flame, the phrase climate crisis wasn't mentioned. So there's already a slightly different emphasis there. Uh, I think in terms of defining loyalty, it's as much about who wasn't attacking her during the leadership campaign as it was about outright declarations of loyalty to certain policies that we're only starting to find out about today. And in terms of how the party within Parliament works, this trust has a big majority, 75. Much has been made of the divisions within the Conservative parties. Are they particularly relevant to her ability to get things done in the short term? They might be, yes, because actually the most profound divisions, I think, are over economic policy. I mean, the one thing that united the party was talking about things like Brexit. Now, all that anyone cares about is the economic crisis. And there, you can think about a spectrum that ranges from your traditional low-tax, small-state conservative to perhaps some of those red wall MPs who who represent constituencies that aren't sort of typically conservative, who are hoping for a bit more largesse from the state, a bit more investment in levelling up projects. So there are going to be some difficult gaps to try and bridge for the Prime Minister, yes.